Welcome to the webinar. My name is Mike Wood. We are going to talk today about getting started with Dropship on eBay. And we are going to focus our attention on using existing retail stores to begin the process to teach this to you. So let's just jump right in and get you started. First, understand what Dropship is and what it isn't. Understand the pros and cons. Every strategy has good things and bad things. So that's just something that uh, that comes with the territory, uh, and you need to understand that. So this is no different than any other strategy. It has pros and it has cons. Dropship is simply a method of selling a product that you do not have, that you don't personally own or have in hand. In a nutshell, dropship means that the item will be shipped by someone other than yourself. So the basic strategy is this. You list an item that you do not own for sale on eBay, for example. And then your work is done. You sit back, lay on the beach, right? Not quite. <laughs> your work is just beginning here. Keep in mind that if you were opening a brick and mortar store, you would need to completely stock all the shelves with hundreds if not thousands of products before you expect customers to come in and start buying from you and expect to see sales. So with eBay, treat it like a business. Be sure to repeat the listing process many times before expecting customers to start buying from you. This is a very important, setting your proper mindset and expectations up front. So you list the, the item up there on eBay. When the item does sell, you get paid for the item by your buyer. You will then be notified through email and the eBay app on your phone. You then need to go place the order for the item to your supplier. So wherever you found that item originally, you've got to go place that, uh, uh, that order now. The supplier then ships the item directly to your customer on your behalf. Your profit is the difference between your cost from that supplier, whoever that might be, and the price that you sell it for. Now remember we've got fees in there, so be sure to mark up the item enough to cover your fees, 10% uh, from eBay, 25 to 3% uh, from PayPal, and possibly 8 to 10% for uh, sales tax. Okay, so generally somewhere between 30 to 40% markup will be enough to give you a profit. And the markup, of course, is going to be different based on the cost or the type of item that you're listing. Now, again, as I said before, there are both pros and cons to this strategy. So let's look at those a little bit. The pros are often the most obvious and the first thing that you see. The pros to this strategy include no upfront costs. Um, no stocking inventory, and no shipping items. So you don't have to handle all of that. You don't have to um, invest up front. You don't have to handle inventory or manage inventory, and you don't have to ship the item. Sounds great, right? So what's the downside? What are the cons? Well, I'm glad you asked, because we need to know that and recognize that as well when we're running a business. So the cons are you don't control the inventory, you have a lower profit margin, generally, than if you were to handle the product and buy things uh, uh, at steep discounts. And because you don't control the inventory, you will sometimes have to cancel orders. And so you've got to be uh, very comfortable with that process, uh, understand customer service well, and be ready for those issues when they come. OK, so we know the basics. We've gone through the nutshell. Let's get started on listing a, uh, a product. So first, remember to use tabs to move quickly between websites. So you'll see that I have up here eBay open in one tab. And let's go to the home page of eBay to get us started. And then over here, I have Amazon open in another tab. We'll pull those over so they're right next to each other. So you can move those around, click and drag that wherever you want it between the other tabs on your um, browser. And so we've got our eBay tab here and we have Amazon as our supplier. So 
we're going to teach you what is uh, uh, what we refer to as the manual method to get you started. There are automated options, softwares that can automate a lot of this for you. That is something that uh, can come in once you are more experienced. You've gone through the process a bit, and you're well, you've gained that experience that you need to be professional and be able to work this effectively on eBay. Now, you can choose any retailer. It doesn't have to be Amazon or, or any specific retailer. It can be any retail website that you're familiar with. Big box brand is what we're looking for, though. So when you're out there on the retailer, you're going to search for an everyday product that is not extremely popular. Don't try to sell the hottest products because that's what everybody's selling. It's going to be the hardest to sell, the most competitive, and the lowest profit margins. So let's try something uh, more mundane. Some examples might include sandbags. Now one thing I want you to notice is as you start typing in here, there are a lot of options that come up. Right? So we could look for sandbags for umbrellas, uh, umbrella bases, sandbags for fitness, sandbags for flooding, uh, sandbags for photography, empty sandbags, uh, or we can just do a search for sandbags. We could search for trampolines. We could search for dog tunnels, salt lamps, cutting boards, dish drainers, shower curtains. These are all ideas of more mundane products that we can search for. Now, one thing I suggest when you're on Amazon is click the Prime box up here at the top left. Always check that Prime um, box so that we're looking at only items that are shipped by Amazon. Or if they are shipped by a third party under Prime, they're more likely guaranteed that they'll go out in a timely manner very quickly. Because in order to be Prime, you've got to offer two-day shipping. So we want items that are going to be shipped quickly. And if it's not Prime, then you might have a third-party seller on Amazon that could take a week or two weeks or three weeks, who knows, to ship an item and get it to your buyer. We don't want any delays. Okay, That's one of the things that can cause some problems and create a red flag concern for eBay. So we can go in and look at some of these uh, items. And, and even on eBay, notice that there are items that sell for different prices. So here's a refillable bundle of 10 sandbags uh, selling for $9.99. And uh, up here we've got 100 for $48.99. And you'll see the sim um, same kind. So here's another one with 10 for $13.99. Uh, here's uh, 50 for 24.99. So there's all kinds of possibilities here, all kinds of different uh, um, price points, even for the same items. Okay. So we can go in and click on the item, and avoid items that have a lot of variations. For now, keep it simple: one item, no variations. First thing we want to do when we get in here is enlarge the photo by clicking on it so that we have the larger version of the photo. And then we can right click. And you're looking for this option, Save Image As. Now I'm using the Chrome browser. That's what it says here on Chrome. We do not want a Save As option. If I were to click over here, or over here maybe, there I've got Save As. That's going to save a web page file. That's not what we want. We want a save image as so that we're saving the image file. Okay. If that option is not available, find another product or another retailer if you see that uh, too often not happening. Um, or give us a call to, to walk you through it to make sure. Of course, you can rewind this uh, webinar and watch it again to make sure that you're getting each of these steps correctly. So we're going to save that image. Click on that Save Image As. We're going to choose where we want to save that image to. And then we're going to name that image. Name it something related to the uh, item that we are downloading. So this is, there we go, Sandbags, for example. And then click Save, and that will save the item to your desktop or wherever you choose to save it. Pay attention to where you saved it, because wherever you saved it, that's where you're going to find it. Okay? So now we can go to eBay to list our item. So we've got the image downloaded. Keep it simple. You don't need all the images that are out there. Uh, if it is an item that would benefit from having multiple images, great. Download two or three, but otherwise keep it simple. So we go back up here to eBay, 
And back on eBay, uh, hopefully you're familiar with the, the listing process by now. You've practiced a little bit. This isn't your very first time. Uh, that's part of why you practice with hands-on items that you have around the house and some used items. In addition to putting eBay at ease, you're getting the experience from that. Uh, this process should be about the same. The only difference really is where the product comes from or the product images and where the description comes from. You're going to copy and paste it. And then of course your pricing strategy might be a little different. So now that we're here on eBay, there are two ways to start selling. We can click on sell up here at the top, which will take us into our selling screen, either seller hub if you have that, or possibly to a page where it's asking you to start a listing. If you're in Seller Hub, then you come under Listings and create listing. Um, or like I said, you might just go directly to this page that you're going to see come up. So that's one option that we can do is to click on Sell and in Seller Hub create listing, and that will get us started on creating a listing. Another option is to just do a search for a simple related keyword. So for example, sandbags. If we run a search for this item on eBay, it's going to pull up the results of active listings on eBay and it'll tell us how many, right up here, uh, how many results it found on active listings. Well, if we scroll down on the left-hand column, looking at the left-hand side with all these check boxes over here, we scroll down to the last group of check boxes, and we'll see here it's the show only section. And right there we have sold items. So if we click on that show only sold items, then that's going to bring up sold items. And it also says how many results for sold items under that keyword that we searched. And there we have items uh, that are similar. We do not need to find an exact same item. All we're looking for is to get in the same category. And so we can come to any one of these and click sell one like this. So that's the second way to start listing an item. Either way, you're going to come into this create your listing window. Now if your create listing doesn't look like this, if you have a more simplified view, then up at the top right you'll see an option to switch to business uh, listing tool. And you want to go ahead and switch to that business listing tool if you haven't already so that your page looks very similar to what you're seeing here. Now of course eBay is a website. Websites are not uh, uh, static. They're not cut in stone. They change all the time so eBay is going to change this and tweak this and so it might look slightly different by the time you're watching this video. They could change it five minutes after I get this video uploaded. So don't be too uh, uh, concerned if things look a little bit different, but it should have a similar uh, um, layout to what you're seeing here. All right, so now that we're on the business listing tool, um, we're going to ignore any options that cost money, like this right here, stand out with a bold title in search results. Do not check that. Um, subtitle, $1.50 extra. Don't do that. We're going to create our title make it match similar to what we had over here. We don't need brand names, so we're going to ignore that. But this right up here, we can copy that, highlight and copy, and then paste it into our title here. Uh, it's cutting off my quantity of 100, so I'm going to delete that um, comma there. And there we go, we've got a nice keyword um, related title. Empty sandbags with solid ties, UV protection sandbags. Well, we don't need sandbags in there um, twice, so we'll go ahead and fix this. Um, we're going to uh, take this UV protection and cut that out of there and put it over here. Empty UV protection sandbags. And some people might search for sandbags as one word, so it's not going to hurt to put it in there. These days, most search engines, I believe including eBay's, will usually still show your listing if you have a variation of that word. Um, but it's, uh, if we don't have other keywords to put in there, then we'll do this. With solid ties, I don't think that's important. We could say with ties, but again, that's probably not important uh, um, for our title. The title should be keywords 
Again, this is something you should know. You've already gone through listings before you get to this point, but it should be relevant keywords to the product we're listing. Keywords that are likely to be typed in when somebody is searching for the product because that's how our product will come up. Empty UV pr protection. Um, I don't know if we need protection or protected. Uh, I, I don't think we we need that word in there. Um, UV, empty UV sandbags. Um, sandbags, uh, we could put uh, white. Again, don't repeat the same word unless we can do it as two words. With ties, we've got the size and we've got the quantity. We've got the color, so that's pretty good for this. Now, if we can come up with other keywords to fill the rest of those characters, we always want to do that. So make sure you're you're doing a little bit of research. Look at other uh, sold items. Uh, you can open up another tab and go to eBay on that other tab and do a search again over there. For sake of time and keeping this simple, I'm not going to go through and do all of that, but uh, just know that that's something that you should do when you're creating a listing. Use as many of those characters as you possibly can, those characters that are relevant. You can also look at the description over here to see other characters that people might um, search for that uh, might be used. Um, we could do reusable, for example. Maybe that's something that, that people are using, right? So get creative. Use uh, as many relevant keywords as you can. Do a little bit of uh, research there. I recommend capitalizing the first letter of each word so that they kind of stand out to people. Now, as with any other listing, anything that has a red asterisk by it, like condition and photos, are required. So we've got to make sure that we're using those or that we're, we're putting something in that field. So to add photos, we remember where we put it. For me, I put it on my desktop. I remember what I named it, so it's easy to find. Right? I've got the large version of it because I clicked on the smaller first and then right-clicked on the larger version. And so there I have my image there. We scroll on down. It's asking for a brand. It says it's required. Well, uh, I'm going to call it unbranded. Asking for an, a manufacturer's part number, MPN. We can click does not apply. If that option isn't there, just put in N slash A. Okay, and that will suffice. The description is simply copy and paste. Don't get carried away here. We don't need too much information. We can just copy that right there, paste it in there, and there we are. We can get rid of the bullet points if we want to to make it look more. Uh, readable, or if you like the bullet points, leave them in there. All right, then we come down to the buy it now price, the quantity, leave the quantity at one for now. There's no need to, to do multiple on quantity. It, it uh, takes up more of your limits, and if you're new, you're going to have limits. We don't want to be eating those limits up quickly. Format should be fixed price, not auction style, and we do not want to check best offer generally on these dropship items. For price, we want something that is higher than our cost. So our cost is round up $40. So our cost is $40. So we're going to list this for at least 30% increase. So what we want to do is take 40, multiply it by 1.3 equals 52. Or 40 multiplied by 1.3 four equals 56. Now that price is going to fluctuate depending on the price of, of the item that we're, we're buying. If we are going to list a, a $500 item, if it costs us 500 for example, we're not necessarily going to go list that for eight or 900. We don't need to go that high. So on those higher price point items, we might only list it for 28 to 30 percent increase where a lower dollar amount uh, item under a hundred dollars we're going to be okay usually listing it at a um, 35 to 40 or even 45 percent increase so we can list these in here for 56 dollars and 
then we uh, we don't need uh, uh, any more of these details. We're not going to do private listing or make a donation. Payment options uh, are required. Uh, um, eBay is moving to managed um, payments by eBay. Uh, so that is likely what you'll need to put in there. But uh, if it if you still have the PayPal option, then of course make sure you've got your PayPal email address there. There is a checkbox there for require immediate payment with Buy It Now. Uh, that is actually a good idea to uncheck that. Do not have that checked when you're new to eBay because for some reason with new accounts, checking that can cause an error and it's a glitch in eBay's system. And so it might cause an error and you'll get this little thing saying, hey, there's an error or a problem with your PayPal email address or with your payment method or whatever. That's all it is, is that little checkbox. Uncheck it, list again, and, and it'll go through just fine. Sales tax, generally, you don't have to worry about that at all. We can uh, uh, set this to the first empty field up at the top and leave it blank. eBay collects sales tax and sends it to each state, so we don't have to handle any of that. Okay. <clears throat> return options. If you want to accept returns, you can. I generally don't mess with uh, returns at all, but it's not uh, it's it's preference. You can choose that if you'd like to. Shipping. You can either do a calculated shipping, a flat cost shipping, or free shipping. If you do flat, then it's easy to do free shipping just by checking the free shipping over here. If you have a Prime account on Amazon, or if you are going to use a prime trial which they will let you do when you sell products then you can you'll have free shipping from Amazon and so you can check that here and not worry about it if you select calculated for shipping you must select a service if you're not doing calculated you could do something more generic like this standard shipping which is a good way to go with free shipping Handling time, three days is a good idea. That is business days. Saturdays and Sundays don't count. You'll usually have that shipped. That's, be, that's how, um, how, much, how many days between the time they pay to the time it gets shipped. That's handling time. So it's not shipping days, it's handling time. <clears throat> international shipping. I only suggest doing international shipping through the international, um, the global shipping program that eBay has, which you might not have access to yet if you're new to eBay. So generally speaking, I would just say don't worry about international, just do the lower 48 states. Another thing that you can do with shipping is you can restrict it to only ship to those uh, um, lower 48 states. And so that is something that uh, if you have that option here, I'm not showing it on this account. To um, we do want to do excluding shipping locations. We want to we want to make sure we're shipping only to the lower 48 states. So I'm going to select to edit my um, uh, shipping locations, and really the only ones you need selected are these ones here at the top and at the bottom. You don't have to select the international ones because we've already said we're not going to do any inter international shipping. So these need to be selected. Alaska, Hawaii, U.S. Protectorates, APO, FBO. If you have that option, uh, you only want to ship to the lower 48, so you would want to check to exclude uh, Hawaii, uh, Protectorates, uh, FPO, APO, PO boxes, Alaska, and those types of locations. Okay, And then we just... Continue on down. The package weight and dimensions are not needed unless we did calculated shipping, and then they're going to be required. If we do flat or free, we don't have to worry about that. We don't need to worry about the sell it faster, promoted listing stuff, so we can ignore that. We can ignore the volume pricing. We're done. And your fees should be zero unless you've gone past the, the first 200 items that eBay well, currently 200. They may change it tomorrow, right? But the number of items that eBay allows you to list each um, each month free. And so that's it. Click list your item, and it should complete the listing for you. That is how we do drop ship from retailers on eBay. Now remember, when you get notified of a sale from something like this, you need to go purchase that item. So make sure that you 
copy that link and save it somewhere. Create a document of all the things that you have uh, listed from retailers. And then once you do this, remember it's not go have a, a great time on the beach and sit back and rake in the, the money. No, go repeat the process. Repeat it, repeat it, repeat it. That repetition is how you build a business. So keep doing it. The more you do it, the faster you'll get. Thank you for watching this webinar. I hope this has been helpful for you.